There's no question that the truth about Mary co-redemptrix is contained in Scripture, in the Church's rich tradition, in the explicit teachings of the Church's magisterium and the very lips of the popes themselves. But what about this truth of Mary and her unique suffering with Jesus as it's contained in that domain of private revelation, that domain of revelation from God which is entrusted to the Church but comes to individuals and has as its purpose leading individuals to a greater conduct of a generous Christian life. Welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we're in the midst of a series concerning the historical high points of this role of the Blessed Virgin Mary as the co-redemptrix with Jesus of the human race. We've been following the outline contained in this book called With Jesus, the Story of Mary Co-Redemptrix, which if you desire you can obtain for three dollars from Queenship Publishing and uh, that can be received through the email and uh, access through queenship.org. Uh, and we're at the point of history, we've talked about the early church, starting with scripture and then on to the patristic age, middle ages, the uh, modern age, the contemporary age of the popes, the official magisterial confirmation that co-redemptrix is a, is a title and is a role that the ordinary magisterium has taught. Now we want to look at this domain of the mystical tradition, the private revelation, and I would even say limiting it to the private revelation of the last two centuries. Uh, in specific, the Age of Mary. It's universally designated as an Age of Mary because since the apparitions of our Blessed Virgin to St. Catherine Labore in 1830, there have been more uh, Marian dogmas, more authenticated Marian apparitions, more Marian congresses, more Marian theology, uh, the greatest Marian popes in history uh, than in any other period in the history of the Church. And so it's rightly designated the Age of Mary. What during this private revelation, revelation to this age, uh, what is being said about Mary as co-redemptrix? Well, let's begin in this segment on the, the origins of the Age of Mary, which in fact brings us to 1830. The scene is a Paris mother house. Uh, the order is the daughter of charities, and in fact, the visionary is St. Catherine Labore. On November 27th, 1830, Our Lady appeared to St. Catherine Labore, and in a vision, she appears in a form that resembles uh, what we would call uh, a medal. It has the outline and form of a medal, and there is the instruction to take these two images, these two visions, and to have a medal struck after these two images. So, in the midst of the revelation, the, the image of Our Lady actually turns itself around so that the back can be seen. What is this vision of what is to become the miraculous medal of Our Lady? Well, St. Catherine describes it as follows. That Our Lady appears, she is crushing uh, Satan, a serpent, under her feet. She has her arms outstretched and there are rays of light coming from her outstretched hands. On this first front image, you have the words encircling the image, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Then the image turns, as I mentioned, and you see the back vision, if you will. And the back image is an M, a large, a sizable M, connected to a cross by a horizontal beam. Under this M cross are the images of the hearts of Jesus and Mary. The heart of Jesus is pierced uh, and the heart of Mary has a sword going through it. Uh, the heart of Jesus is, has a type of crown of thorns. And as well on this back image we have the image of 12 stars circling the picture. Now, Our Lady says, uh, you know, have a medal struck after Im uh, this image. Those who wear it will receive great graces. And again, let's be clear, this is an apparition that was approved by the Church as being supernaturally authentic. 
What is the co-redemptrix significance of this image? Well, from the beginning, you have Mary crushing the head of the serpent. This refers to Genesis 3.15, when indeed Our Lady uh, is prophesied as being the one who would crush the head of Satan. Uh, and there's been various theological uh, interpretations of uh, and translations of the pronoun. You know, is it he will crush his head or she will crush his head? This is, if you recall, the words of God the Father to Eve, uh, excuse me, God the Father to the serpent after the sin, and God the Father says that this serpent will be walking uh, really on his belly, uh, and indeed that there will be enmity between the woman and the serpent, and that in the original uh, translation for some 1,500 years, it was ipsa in Latin, she will crush your head, making reference to the woman. And then uh, the, the reference of lying in wait for her heel, that, 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 that's, that's Satan's response, that's Satan's access to the lady, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a token access. Uh, imagine someone having access to crushing your head versus you having the possibility of striking their heel. Uh, victory's all in that already. So, indeed, from the beginning of Genesis 3.15, as depicted on the Miraculous Medal, what you have is a reference of Mary uniquely sharing in the victory over Satan. Uh, this is precisely her role as the co-redemptrix. And it's interesting that at the beginning of this age of Mary, the beginning of the private revelation of this age of Mary, you have front and center Mary crushing the head of the serpent, which again is her role as the co-redemptrix. On the back, we see that the M is connected to the cross. Uh, what again does that mean? It, it's, a, it's a further reference to Our Lady's role at the foot of the cross with Jesus, that Mary is indeed connected to the cross. Mary is the woman who offers the sacrifice of her son to the Father, just as she did in the temple. Uh, but now it is a bloody offering. Now it is the offering of a victim that has been immolated, a victim that has been destroyed for the sake, for the object, for the intention of the offering. So, Our Lady is at the foot of the cross. That's the M connected to the cross. This is again her role as co-redemptrix. My friends, I think we have to be careful of not making more complicated what this doctrine is. We're saying that Mary uniquely shares with Jesus in the work of the redemption. And for that unique sharing, you have a unique suffering on the part of the Mother of Christ. So, from the beginning of this private revelation age, called the Age of Mary in a special way, and the devotion to the Miraculous Medal, we have the co-redemptrix formidable on both of these visions. Now, incidentally, it's also, I think, worthwhile to add that on the front of the Miraculous Medal, we have Our Lady with her outstretched hands uh, and rays coming forth from those hands. Uh, that is a visual way of depicting her role as the Mediatrix of all grace. Um, as well, on the front cover, we have in the prayer, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to Thee. Pray for us who have recourse to Thee is Our Lady's role as Advocate. So as many of our contemporaries have noted, the three-fold aspects of the doctrine of Mary as a spiritual mother, her role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, are all present in the Miraculous Medal. And what does that tell us? That tells us that this is going to be a crucial theme throughout the age of Mary, and we're going to see through the development of private revelation only a greater concretization, a greater clarification that indeed heaven acknowledges Mary as the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, and we should too. This is Dr. Mark Mirvali with Mary Cast. God bless you.